Hello folks, Jason Cressman, JC's Bees, your Central Ohio beekeeper. In this week's video, we're going to dive into this hive and see if this guardian entrance is actually stopping the hive beetles. You'll want to pay attention to that, especially if you're battling hive beetles. And let me tell you, if you're not, it's only a matter of time, so you might as well watch it too. At the end of the video, I want to introduce somebody to you, and I'm pretty excited about that. So let's get started. Let's dive on into the hive, and then on to my introduction. Try and do our best to keep our eyes open for any small hive beetles at all. So if you see one, make sure you leave it in the comments below, because I may have overlooked one. Okay, so right off the bat, usually this is a good place to see small hive beetles because there's not a whole lot of bee population up here. But I do not see any. Flip the lid over, take a gander. Here again, I do not see any small hive beetles. Lay this down against the front of the hive. Okay, so I fed them yesterday, and it looks like they've emptied the frame feeder, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that, get it out of my way, make it a little easier to work here. If you wanna try and inspect the full colony, especially the places where there's not a whole lot of bee population, which was on top of the inner cover. We didn't find any there. Another good place to look is in this top deep since it's not completely full. Looky there. Started to draw a little comb on the bottom of the feeder. Okay, frame one. And they've only been in this top box for about two weeks. Looks like all nectar, open celled nectar, or wet nectar. This side is all brewed, mostly uncapped. I'd say it's really close to being capped though, looking at it and its size. This frame, all brewed too. Looking across here, there's my queen. You see her right here? I didn't use the, the blue like everybody else is using for this year. I'm not a big fan of the of the blue marking. It just doesn't stand out very well. So for that reason, I don't use blue or green. You'll also find that if you sell queens, blue and green is hard to see for people that are colorblind. Okay, looks like they're starting to draw this frame out. I'm um, looking here really closely trying to see any hive beetles and it's a little bit tougher to see them on this black foundation but I do not see any and last frame and there's not a whole lot of bees on it but in the hive beater world that's an ideal place to be hiding if you're a beetle. So let's take a gander. Looks like wet nectar going in there. And this is a Saracel frame. Um, if you notice, on the outside edges, it's got cells all the way around the outside of the frame. It makes it a little bit trickier uh, to spot the hive beetles because they would hide in them but I do not see any. Let's flip it over. 
Uh, they're still not really doing much with this side. They have drawn it out just a tiny little bit in places. Don't see any hive beetles. So let's reassemble this top box. And let's go downstairs in the basement and see how it's looking down there. So far, I like it. Okay, let's put the frame feeder back in. I really like these feeders. Made some updates to them over the years to make them work a little bit better than when you buy them. Uh, if that's something you're interested in, I'll link that up in the top right hand corner. Pretty much it's a float design that I've installed Poor bee, just squished her head. Might as well just go ahead and finish her off so she ain't suffering. And that how it is, folks. You go through the top box, don't mess with your smoker for a minute, and it goes out. There we go. Down into the bottom box, or the basement, as I called it. And I'll set this box right over here. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of that burr comb from the bottom of the feeder right there. You see how I smoke the bees to get them away from it? Now I'm gonna use my hive tool and set it on the hive next door till I'm done making this video and then I'll clean it up. That's one way that will draw hive beetles to your bee yard, leaving pieces of scrap wax layout. The beetles will smell it before long Voila, you've got beetles. Something you never wanted. Okay, that looks a lot better. There's a little bit of a Darth going on, so I know they can be a little cranky, so that's why I'm smoking them a little bit extra. I really don't look for any hive beetles to be in this bottom box just due to the population if you got any experience at all you know a strong hive alone is enough to somewhat control hive beetles and this bottom box is pretty strong all wet nectar the whole dang frame. I don't see an empty cell on this side. And I don't see any little black beetles running around. Let's check the other side. Com completely empty comb. The yellow foundation. It's really easy to spot the hive beetles, but I do not see a single one. Okay, so temporarily... I think what I'm going to do is just lay this frame right here on top of the top box versus sitting it on the ground and a new pest walking from the ground onto the frame. Second frame. Completely brewed. Most of it capped. And this is one of my foundationless frames, so I gotta watch how much I tilt it to the side. I <laughs> don't see any hive beetles, folks. Here's this side. Completely foundationless frame. It's got a wedge at the top with wax on it, and then uh, I think there's three sections or three pieces of uh, fishing line going across there to help give it some strength 
but when I cocked it to the side just a little bit, I did see it start to bow out, so. Gotta be a little bit more careful with them frames. Third frame. Look at that brood. Do you see these bees? That's where you get them. That's where you get the queens to do this. Look at that. I don't see a hive beetle. Completely capped. fourth frame now, there's just no place down here for a beetle to hide there's just too many bees and this one's got a little bit of capped brood but it looks like it's laid out in eggs again which is awesome same thing on this side There again, it's just a quick inspection, folks, but I did not see a single hive beetle on that frame there either. Last frame. Watch out, little girl. Daddy's coming in to check some things. This frame, brood on the outside wall. Usually you don't see brood on the outside wall. More so when the cool weather starts to move in, but usually in the summer not a whole lot either. All capped brood, folks. And this inner wall was coated with bees too. You'd think it was another frame there. Okay, so now back together put their house back the way that we left, or we started. Here's a little trick for you when you're putting in frames. You'll see bees right where you're about to squish them between these uh, spacers here on the frame, these spacer bars. And uh, what I like to do is, for instance, this side there is no bees, so I can close it. But this side, there's a couple bees in there. I'm going to squish if I slide this frame all the way over. So what I'll do is I'll take it over, put a little pressure on the bee, back it off. And you do that a couple times, and usually they'll move, and you don't harm them any. Last frame, back in. Just trying to take my time. I don't want to harm any bees in the recording of this video. There we go. They're all down in there. I'll give them a little smoke, push them up over the edge, and back into the box. I'll smoke these ones. Throw the top back on. Put the inner cover back where it goes. Throw on the outer lid. And we'll call these bees amazing, folks. That's what we'll call them. And we'll call that Guardian a badass device to have. So what'd you think? Pretty impressive, huh? Um, do I credit all that to the Guardian Hive entrance? I guess I kind of have to this year. But what I'd like to do is, let's say in a year, 
let's say August 2021, we'll do another inspection and see how it's looking. And here's why I say that. I've heard people uh, comment on some of my uh, small hive beetle videos and say that one year they might have a, a strong hive beetle population infesting their hives. The next year or two, it might be low. And then all of a sudden, poof, it's back up again. So, I just kind of wonder if maybe my hive beetle population is low this year because last year they exploded on me. And it was pretty much my first experience with the small hive beetle. So, I have to take my little bit of knowledge that I've learned from them and put them towards this entrance. Um, I do like the entrance. I think it's uh, a great little gadget to have, surely doing something um, to not have any small hive beetles because I have seen a few in some of my other nukes, but at the same time, those other nukes, um, they don't have the guardian hive entrance. I guess that maybe that's why I'm seeing them there. Um, but um, th those other hives that do have them only have one or two. So maybe I just have a, a low population on hive beetles this year. But at the same time, I don't want to take any credit from the Guardian Hive entrance because it did do, uh, it does seem to be doing something. So there you go, folks. That's my observation on the Guardian Hive entrance this year. If you want to learn more about it, make sure you subscribe. And uh, in a year, we'll come back and do a follow up. But for now, let's hop over and check out this new addition to the family. All right, now time for the in introduction. But first, I want to give you all a big thank you for the heartfelt um, replies to the announcement of the loss of my dog Angus last week, my pit bull. Um, we had Angus for 13 years, so that was a very hard loss. Um, after a few days of not having Angus and the house being empty, quiet, we started to think maybe we should get another dog. So we spent three days looking. We checked on Craigslist, Pet Finder, Humane Societies, dog shelters. We were online, we were on the phone, and uh, I tell you, we just didn't have much luck. Um, maybe that's because of some of the requirements that we had on our list. We wanted a male, we wanted a pit bull, and this pit bull needed to be good with other animals because we have chickens free ranging, ducks free ranging, I have a couple cows and a couple goats. So that's kind of a lot. And uh, I tell you, the first day we started looking, and we found some dogs that we liked, but none of them, actually all three days, um, when we were looking, none of them just met all of these requirements that we had wrote down. So on the third day, or actually every day, we kept falling back to this picture of this dog in Columbus, Ohio. Um, it wasn't a, a pit bull, it was an American bully, which is a cross between a pit bull and a bulldog. They're a little bit more muscle bound than a pit bull um, but the problem was is this dog was a female and she was not fixed she was also three years old which was a little older than what we thought we were thinking maybe somewhere between the three to eight months range but that just wasn't working for us and then we started to think you know do we really want to raise a puppy all the training and the chewing on my shoes and everybody's shoes i don't know Maybe we got to roll out a puppy and go for a little bit older of a dog. So after a couple of days of thinking on it, keep going back to this picture of this female dog. Something about her eyes just drew us right in. She had these sad little eyes like she just knew that we needed her. And uh, with that, we ended up contacting the owner and going to meet the little girl. And right now I want to introduce you to Ladybug, our new dog. Come here, girl. Here she is. Turn around here for the camera, honeys. You gotta turn around your butt. Turn your butt. There you go. Say hi to everybody. Say hi. Look, this is Ladybug. Ladybug is three years old. She's had two litters of puppies, but she's not gonna have any more. We're gonna get her fixed, and we're gonna love her. And I'm probably gonna share her in a lot more of my videos. And I'll tell you why. When you lose somebody or something, it's nice to have video footage to look back on. And I didn't get a whole lot of video and pictures of Angus. It seems I take more pictures of bees and, and cows and chickens than I do of my own dogs. 
and that's sad. That bothers me. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to start sharing Ladybug in a lot of my videos. So if you like little Ladybug, make sure you give her a big shout out down in the comments. She'd really like to hear when I tell her, hey, such and such just said to tell you hi and give you a big old pet on the head. Really good dog. I tell you, um, I don't know if it's just because I'm a male, but she's really clingy to me and not so much my wife or daughter. When I go to the farm in the mornings, I hear that she does a lot of whining until dad gets back. And then she's already learned that as she stands on the chair, she can see out the window when she hears the four-wheeler coming back down the road. And she can see dad pull into the yard. And then when I go into the house, she starts doing these circles round and around because she's so happy to see daddy. Huh. Yes, there's a good girl. So this is Ladybug, folks. I wanted to take a minute and introduce you to you. She's quite the little snorer. She loves her sleeping time. She loves to snore. And she's a tremendous bed hog. She weighs 80 pounds, so she's quite thick and solid. And there's not much pushing on the bed to get her out of your way. It's pretty much where she wants to lay. It's where she's going to sleep. But anyway, folks, I wanted to take a minute or let you all meet my little girl. Um, very glad to have her. She's not going to replace Angus, but she's definitely going to help fill that empty void that we've had. And for that, a oh, big thank you. So if you enjoyed this video, folks, throw me a big thumbs up. Um, that'll help boost it in the YouTube search ranks. If you've got any questions at all about the Guardian Hive entrance, um, you can go down below, leave a comment down there. Also, make sure you go down in the video description, and uh, right there you can order that Guardian Hive entrance from Blythewood Bee Supply. See, I got it right. For all this time, all these years, I've been calling it Bly the Wood and not Blythewood. Common mistake, I guess. Anyway, I want to apologize to Scott for pronouncing it wrong. And uh, there will be a link to Scott's store, Blythewood Bee Supply, down in the video description. It'll take you right over to the Guardian Hive entrance. So, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Make sure you click on that little bell so you can get notified when I release new videos. And uh, make sure you level on your dog today, folks. They don't last forever. Thanks for watching JC's Bees.